everyone. Today we're going to talk about screen editing. This is the first video in our new series, so I'm going to cover some of the basics to get you started. The most important piece of advice I can give you when it comes to editing and creating screens is to create a copy of the screen you want to alter. Do not edit the original screens. It's easy to get carried away with your edits and you're going to want to back up just in case you make a mistake you can't undo. So let me show you how. To make a copy of one of the original screens, you're going to open up your Mach 4 directory and then the screens sub folder. Today I'm going to be using the WX4 set here. Now you have two options when building your own screen. You can start from scratch with the blank screen set or you can make changes to an existing screen. It can be a little overwhelming building a brand new screen out of a blank page so I would recommend starting with one of the pre-built screens and adding or removing functions. To get started I'm going to right click on the WX4 screen set, choose copy and then paste it back right into the same folder. It does add copy here to distinguish between the original and the one that you're going to be using and you can go ahead and rename that to whatever you want to by either clicking on it or right clicking and then choosing rename. Now that we have our new screen set, we're going to go back to Mach 4 and load it. So we're going to go to view, load screen and then choose our new screen that we've made. Once we give it a chance to load, we're going to go to operator and then edit screen. This step is important because that's how you're going to save and exit your screen once you've finished making changes. And just like a lot of other configuration options in Mach 4, the screen editor is disabled while your machine is enabled. If you find edit screen is grayed out, make sure you're not enabled. So just to repeat, we're going to go to operator and then edit screen. Right away, you'll see we have some new options available. I'm going to take this one step at a time and break down what you're seeing on this screen editor. Let's start here with the screen tree manager. This tree breaks down the organization and content of your screen. Now, I wanted to show you the WX4 screen rather than a blank screen, so you can see how this tree sorts through everything you're seeing on the screen step by step. As we expand the list, more and more options become available, and the details of the screen begin to unfold. So this tree is sorted into layers, and if we select a feature, it's going to reveal its properties. So as we can see in the control group, which is highlighted down here once we click on it, we can expand that one step further and choose the cycle start button, which is highlighted here. Because this screen is already built, each of these options have specific labels on them. You'll notice when you begin building your own screen that you can edit those labels to fit as well. Once you've selected a feature like the cycle start button, you'll notice its properties have been filled in in the properties window. Now these include things like physical aspects such as size, position, color, font, as well as the function and purpose of the feature in this tab here. These are called the events and they allow you to add scripting or choose from a list of functions. The properties listed in these windows will differ based on which type of feature you have selected. This particular button, the cycle start button, has a script feature. The reason it has a script feature is because it changes based on which tab you're on. So if you're on the G code tab, it cycle starts your G code. If I were on the MDI tab, it would cycle start my MDI. But there is a basic cycle start function from the drop down list here, as well as a ton of other options you can choose from. Now, the features themselves can be found in this section here. You'll notice they're all grayed out, but that's because we have the button cycle start already selected. If we change to the default grouping, those do become available to you. Now I'm not going to go into detail on all of them in this video, but you have the delete button and the add button first, delete and add, and the rest of these boxes allow you to add features. You can add a container, add a button like our cycle start button. You can add a bitmap button, which is a button that has an image rather than a square. I'll show you more on that later. You can add a toggle button, which has multiple functions assigned to it. You can add a DRO to show you where your axes are located. You can add an LED. You can add a G code display, which like here will show you the G code that you've chosen. Add a toolpath display so you can see what your cut will look like. You can add static text or a text box. You can add images, tab controls like these here. You can add sliders like our feed rate and rapid rate sliders. You can also add gauges, MDI control lines to keep things neat and organized. You can add a Lua panel. You can also add a plug-in panel. There's a lot of different options that you can utilize to make your screen look exactly the way you need it to. One more thing that's been added for you in the screen editor is the new menu options. You'll notice the menu here is different than it is normally in Mach 4. You have the edit 
drop down, which has copy, paste, delete, and cut. You have the screen drop down, which lets you save your screen and manage your images, as well as add features. This is just a drop down that gives you the same options that you have up here. Now, manage images is an interesting one. This opens up a little window, and as you can see, it's already filled up with images. These are images from other mock screens that you can utilize in your own screen. You can also add images that you can use later. So I'm going to add an image right now that I have saved specially for this. I'm not going to use it right now, but I am going to add it. I'm going to add my thumbs up, and I'm also going to add my thumbs down. That way, later on in this video, I can find them a little bit easier. Now, if you're as fussy as I am, format is going to be your favorite dropdown. This is where you'll tweak the size, position, and alignment of your shiny new features so that everything looks perfect. One thing I want to note about this, when you go to format, align, these are alignments in relation to each other. For example, if I chose cycle start and I wanted to make sure it lined up with feed, hold, stop, reset, and enable, you can click on it, hold down the control button, and then select the multiple buttons. The important thing that you need to remember is the last button that you select is the one that these are all going to line up off of. So if I had enable in exactly the right spot and I wanted to make sure these buttons were as well, I would have to choose that one last and then go to format align centers or left or right, depending on how I'm trying to line it up. We will go into more detail on that in some later videos, but I wanted to let you know that before you start playing around because it was very frustrating for me when I was trying to learn that. Now between the screen tree manager, the properties window, your new menu, and the feature buttons, you can build a brand new usable screen or you can edit one of the screens we built for you to suit your needs. If there are buttons you don't use, you can replace them with functions that you do use. Think gray is ugly? Change your buttons to purple and red. The possibilities are endless. So let's get started making a couple edits. The first thing I think I wanna do is change some colors on these buttons. Let's start with the cycle start button since we already looked at that one. I'm gonna to go to the properties window and see the background color is listed as green. I'm gonna change that to a purple. As you can see, it changes immediately, but now I can't see the font. So let's go ahead and change the font color too while we're here. Perfect. Now let's go with feed hold. Feed hold, yellow is not quite a good color. Let's go with a blue. And again, change the font by going here, clicking that little button, and it opens up this. The stop can stay as red. I think that's probably a good option to keep green and red doing what they're supposed to do. And the reset button, we'll change the background color on that to orange. Awesome. So this screen is already looking a lot better adding on those colors. One other thing I want to do is show you how a bitmap button works. So I'm going to add a tab up here and create a second jogging panel. So we're going to select the main tab section and then click the add button and that's going to populate a new tab for us. Down here in the properties, I'm going to change the name, which adjusts the name in our property tree. That way we can find it later and we're also going to change the label to jogging. That way it appears as jogging on our screen. Next, I'm going to add a bitmap button by clicking this button here and we resize it a little bit. As you can see, it looks a little different from the normal buttons. It has an image on it. That's because you can assign an image to that button by using the properties in the image drop down. These images are populated from the list that we saw earlier under manage images. So if you want to use an image, you want to just add it to that list ahead of time. Now we have a button. I'm going to just throw it down here for the time being, and then we're going to assign a function to it using the events tab. So the left down action, that means when I left click down on this button, what's going to take place? I want it to be a jog in the positive direction for X. So we're going to look for the jog button on our list. I happen to know it's at the very bottom of the list. And we're going to sign that there. And then when I release my left click, I want to make sure the jogging stops. I don't want my machine to get damaged. So we're going to go to jog X off. And now I have a button that jogs my X in a positive direction. Doesn't do as much good unless we have some other jogging buttons. So we're going to go ahead and make those now. So we're going to select jogging because that's where we want this to be. And we're going to add another bitmap button, jogging bitmap. Now the sizing of this doesn't matter because I'm going to adjust that, but we're going to leave it right there for now. And then we're going to add an image. This is going to be my thumbs down. Now I want this to be lined up with my other button here. So we're going to select my thumbs down, hold down my control key, and then click on the thumbs up. This allows us to select both of them. I'm going to use the format tab to make sure they're both the same size and then to align them on their middles. So that means they are 
lined up just the way I want them to. Now we're going to assign a function to this button. So again, we're going to go into our events tab, click our left down action, which happens when we left click on this button, and we're going to scroll down and choose X minus. And then the left up action is going to be the same. It's going to be the jog X off. That way I'm just jogging in the X, X minus direction until I release. So now I have two functional buttons on my screen. Now these are just simple edits that I'm making to this screen. Normally you'd want a jogging panel like the one down here that's a lot more functional, has a lot more options, but I just wanted to show you how you can go about adding these features and then tweaking them to fit. It's all about the properties window down here. You can use this to adjust almost every aspect of a feature. Now let's exit and save this new screen. If you're like me, your first instinct is to smash this red button, but do not do it. This is the delete button and it's only gonna mess up the screen you've been working on. To exit the screen edit page, you go back to operator and click edit screen once again. It's gonna prompt you to save your current screen. You wanna hit yes, and it's gonna bring you back to Mach 4 and show you your functional screen. Before we go to our review in part ways, I want to show you the industrial screen editor. It's very similar to the hobby screen editor I just showed you, but industrial comes with its own perks. So we're going to close out of Mach 4, and then we're going to go to industrial. My favorite thing about this industrial screen editor has got to be the additional functions. Now, you're still able to change the color and the font just like you were in Hobby, but you have so many extra things you can play with. So let's go to Operator, Edit Screen, and let's click on the Program button, for instance. Now, in Industrial, you can choose a mouse over color so that just when you're hovering over this button, it changes color. So when I hover over Program, it turns to purple. How cool is that? Now you'll also notice the fe features are sleeker, a little rounded. It's a very modern look and it's a big draw for OEMs and other industrial users. Industrial also offers some new features like animations and tool offsets and tool tables that you can't use in Hobby, as well as a G-code editor over here. Now whether you're using Hobby or Industrial, the thing to take away from this video is that you have the control to build a custom screen and streamline your production. All right, we're back in Hobby and it's time to review. Here's what we learned in this video. Number one, copy the screen you wanna edit and do not change the originals. Number two, access the screen editor through the operator drop-down menu. N number three, the screen tree manager organizes the aspects of your screen for you into layers. Number four, properties include a feature's visual aspects as well as its function. Number five, the features buttons allow you to add things like buttons, text, and fields to your screen. Number six, the new menu has special screen edit related drop downs like screen and format. Now that you've taken a tour of the screen editor, you can start making changes to your screens and getting the most out of Mach 4. For more information, please check out the Mach 4 screen edit manual at mocksupport.com. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos on screen editing and more coming soon.